That was like probably the worst plot summary I've ever tried to give. Hello, good morning or good evening whenever you're watching this. I hope you are doing well. My name is Catherine and this is my December reading wrap up. In the month of December, I read a total of 16 books, which is definitely improvement from November where I read seven. My average rating was 3.66, which is definitely lower average for me than usual. Normally I definitely have a lot higher of an average. Of those 16 books, 10 were YA while 6 were adult. I'm not really going to go into the genre breakdown because the genres this month were kind of weird. It was a lot of like magical realism romance and like sci-fi maybe fantasy and I just don't have the mental capacity to try and break all those down. I'm just gonna go straight into the books. The first book that I read in December was In a Holidays by Christina Lauren. This is an adult romance and it follows a sort of like Groundhog Day type situation. Basically this woman is on vacation with her like family and her family friends. She's always like been in love with the son of her like parents best friends and she accidentally ends up hooking up with his brother so at the end of the vacation something happens and basically she finds herself at the beginning of the vacation again she is supposed to like try and figure out how to do things correctly overall i enjoyed this book it was very cute i do wish that the like groundhog day element was used a bit more and it honestly kind of like disappeared and then they didn't really think about that at all. The romance was cute and I like that it was this like childhood best friend type romance. I always think those are really adorable. Although I do think that she had a bit more chemistry with <laughs> her parents' friend. <laughs> The, the chemistry between the main couple was off. I ended up giving this book three stars. It was cute. It really wasn't anything special though. Um, yeah, I don't know. I have a lot of mixed feelings about Christina Lauren and their books. I <laughs> The next book that I read was Old Magic by Marianne Curley. This was a reread for me. This was a book that I read like <laughs> in middle school, I think. And I wanted to see how it held up. I did a whole reading vlog where I read like four books from middle school. This book follows Jared and Kate where Jared has like um, a like family curse on him but he doesn't believe in magic. Kate lives with her grandmother who um, they practice magic and they're like witches I guess. I like the magical realism elements to it. I just hated the romance. They had like zero chemistry. If I thought they didn't have chemistry in In Holidays, this one didn't have any chemistry at all. Also, the like writing style of this, no. It was like written in like first person present tense and it was weird. I was not about it. Everything just felt super stilted and it was a lot of like explaining things. This wasn't it for me, fam. I gave it two stars. Am I too generous with my ratings? Probably, but like two stars for me, that's devastating. Basically three stars means it's good but average, two stars means no. <laughs> Next is part of that same vlog, I read The Bermuda's Triangle by Maureen Johnson. This follows a group of three best friends and after a summer where one of the girls, Nina, goes to this like pre-college program and comes back, she finds that their friendship has definitely changed. Overall, I enjoyed reading this book. I will say it's very dated, just a lot of the ideas and some of the things that they say very dated. I did find the girls' relationships interesting and definitely honestly realistic when you get to like that sort of senior year, freshman year of college where you realize that you might not all be headed in the same direction and are you gonna stay friends after high school. It's a devastating time. I ended up giving it three stars just because, again, it was very dated. Next, I read One Day in December by Josie Silver. This book follows a woman who locked eyes with a stranger through a bus and she is determined to find him because she's convinced he might be the love of her life. But things get a little awkward when a year later, her best friend introduces her to her her new boyfriend and it's the guy which is awkward. I feel like this book could have been really fun because it takes place over the course of like 10 years which is 
really cool because you see these characters really grow up from like their mid-20s to their 30s. However, I could not get past the fact that everyone was cheating on each other in this book, <laughs> whether emotionally or like actually cheating on each other. I ended up giving it two stars. Next was the first book that I read for the DCG readathon, and that was A Million Junes by Emily Henry. Hi, editing Catherine here with like day six hair. I forgot to talk about an entire book. My True Love gave to me a YA holiday romance anthology edited by Stephanie Perkins. It has a bunch of like really popular YA authors. It was a really cute anthology. I liked some of the stories. I didn't like others. I learned that anthologies aren't really for me because once you get to like a character, you're on to the next story. And I just, I like sticking with characters more. <laughs> yeah, if you're interested in more of my like individual thoughts in this book, uh, check out my Goodreads review. I like, I'm pretty sure I wrote more like specifically about each of the stories, but my readings for each of them all kind of average out to be about 3.5, so it's a 3.5 book. There we go. I picked this book up on a whim from a used bookstore because I recognized Emily Henry's name and I liked her book Beach Reads. I did not expect to fall in love with this as much as I did. I should probably explain the plot. This book is about a girl named June who, as long as she can remember, was told that she has to stay away from the Angert family. Her family and their family has been feuding since like two, three generations back. But after Saul ends up back in town after going away to college, she finds that she cannot stay away. This book, so it's like a magical realism and sort of paranormal. There's ghosts and also a little bit of like being able to see memories and live through memories, which is always really cool in a book. There's a lot more than what meets the eye in terms of this family feud. There's like forbidden romance. Uh, it's so cute. When I was looking for a book that had actual chemistry between the two main characters, this is it. They had so much chemistry from like the moment that they met and I die. I gave this book five stars. It was one of my favorite books of the year. It literally came out of nowhere. I loved it. The second book that I read for the DCG readathon was The Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society. This book is a series of letters that mostly follow this young author who is writing the story about the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society and basically how the island of Guernsey was able to get through the Nazi occupation. It is a beautifully written story and it is all just completely letters but each of the different characters' personalities just flows through each of the letters. It's so cool and so interesting. I ended up giving this book 4.5 stars. I thought it was so well written. My like only complaint is that they like were like maybe not all Nazis were bad and I didn't <laughs> really <laughs> vibe with that but I think it's a really cool book that like definitely speaks to the power of literature and I love books about books. Book three that I read for the DCG readathon was House of Blood and Earth. House of Earth and Blood. That's what it's called. Okay, here's... Mm, okay, I have a problem with this book. <laughs> And that problem is this fact, why would you make the main title so much smaller? Because this is the title of the book, this is the title of the series. This should have been swapped. Whoever was the designer of this cover, why? Why? Because I just call it Crescent City. Like, no one's gonna call it House of Earth and Blood. Anyway, I read this book. <laughs> It is by Sarah J. Mass, so of course there's like Fay. Um, it's actually a really interesting book where it is a high fantasy that takes place in a sort of like modern time setting. So there's like cell phones and computers and like, it's like a city only, <laughs> like a city we would know, like New York City, except there's like fire spirits and things like that. I'm gonna say I highly recommend going into this book not knowing too much about it. I went in not knowing anything about it, <laughs> except for like little fan art things that I saw here and there. Something that happens that is said on the like inside flap took me by surprise. And honestly, I feel like that's not something that should have been put in the plot summary. It's about a girl. Her name is Bryce. She is like half fey, half human. There's something happening in the city where she ends up having to team up with this guy named Hunt. He has wings. I... Mm, why am I so terrible at plot summaries? I don't know. 
read this book if you like Sarah J Maas, if you like high fantasy type stuff. It's new adult. It's not young adult. It's also not adult, I guess. It's a good time. I like it. I gave it 4.5 stars. Another book that I read for DCG Readathon was Seafire by Natalie C. Parker. This is a book about an all-female pirate crew. Pretty cool. Unfortunately, it was pretty over underwhelming. Not overwhelming, underwhelming. Basically, it's about a girl named Caledonia who is the captain of this all-female crew of like very like young, they're all like teens, of course. She is seeking revenge for her parents' death. I mean, there's not really much more to say about it. It was kind of underwhelming, mostly because you didn't really get to know a lot of the characters. It was like a crew of like 52 girls, and that was just <laughs> too many. I want to like actually know the characters because like I never actually cared about most of the characters. I didn't really care what happened. When something sad happened, I didn't feel sad, which I should. I did end up giving it three stars because the atmosphere of the book is really cool and the overall plot and the fact that it is like kind of sci-fi-y, like they have like solar panels on their ships, which is cool. That was another thing. The world wasn't very well built out, but the atmosphere was really cool. The final book that I read for the DCG readathon was A Curse of Dark and Lonely by Bridget Kamir. Kem mm -hmm. It's about this girl who ends up getting taken into this other world to help this prince break his curse. I mean, it pretty much follows that sort of idea of Beauty and the Beast. Overall, I really enjoyed this story. I thought that it was a really good retelling of Beauty and the Beast. It was different enough that it kept me interested while still keeping enough of the like original sort of tale that it wasn't like unrecognizable. <laughs> I definitely did like one of the side characters a little bit more <laughs> than the main characters. I loved Grey. He was great. I ended up giving this book 3.5 stars. I just, I thought it was a really good story and it definitely drew me in. I finished it in like a day. Also, it did have some really good representation. The main character does have cerebral palsy. I did a whole like reading vlog where I talked about my experience reading the book so check that out. I will say this month had a lot of like half stars. I don't normally do half star ratings but this month I'm like looking at all the books and it's like mm, it's like not quite four but it, I wouldn't put it at three. The next book that I read was Invictus by Ryan Garden. This is a sci-fi about a guy who was born out of time. Basically, he's the son of a time traveler and a Roman gladiator, and he was born in, like, the time jump, so he doesn't actually have a real birthday, which is weird. He wants to follow in the footsteps of his mom and become a time traveler person, but during his, like, test, something happens, and he um, ends up failing. So he becomes a little bit of an outlaw. He forms this crew, and they end up working for a sort of, like, street gang lord type dude going to different places getting cool stuff. Things change though when they end up on the Titanic and they run into this girl who doesn't make sense. She seems to know a lot about them and they know nothing about her or where she comes from and she doesn't seem to belong in their world from any time. I really enjoyed this book. It gave me like serious like Firefly type vibes if you ever have seen the TV show Firefly love that show, should have gotten a second season. I gave it 3.5 stars only because I wanted more. I feel like it should have been almost a duology because you don't get to know the characters as much as you could. It does draw you in, it is really fast paced, and the world is very like well fleshed out, and this whole like time traveler world is really cool. Next was Let It Snow by John Green, Maureen Johnson and Lauren Meyerkohl. This is a compilation of three YA romance stories that take place during Christmas Eve, Christmas, and the day after Christmas, and they all kind of like intertwine. It's a very like love actually type story where you see this character who ends up being the main character of the next book. I reread this book like almost every year. It's super cute. I mean, it's a very basic YA contemporary for sure, but I always have a lot of fun reading it. I don't really go in with high expectations except for me to find it adorable, and that's what it does. Three stars. The next book that I read is How the King of Elfham Learned to Hate Stories by Holly Black. 
This is a novella following the Cruel Prince universe, so it takes place after the last book. Queen of Nothing, great book, love that book. I can't really explain too much about this one without spoiling the rest of the books, so like if you haven't read the rest of the books, you should do that and then read this. Basically it just adds on to the backstory of Prince Cardin. It tells some stories from his perspective. You get a lot of really neat information while also getting to see them post the last book. I don't know if that made sense, but there it is. It also is like an illustrated book and it is so pretty. The illustrations and the like overall design of this story, like, uh, gorgeous. Ended up giving it five stars. It isn't like blow me away amazing, but it does exactly what it's meant to do. It's to add to the world of the Cruel Prince. If you love it, you're gonna love this. It's not meant to like create more story or anything. Just give you a little taste of the characters that you know and love. Next I read Circe by Madeline Miller. This is about Circe, daughter of the sun titan Helios, and the story of how she was like cursed to live on the island of Aiaia, and how she comes to like discover her magic. It's a really really beautifully written book. You see a lot of the characters that you know and love from Greek mythology. You see Odysseus, you see um, what's his name? The, the father of Icarus, and you also meet Icarus. It is just, it's a beautifully written book and very like empowering too. I ended up giving it 4.5 stars. The next book that I read was Kate and Waiting by Becky Albertalli. This book follows a girl named Kate who has always kind of had shared crushes with her best friend Andy, but when one of their shared crushes suddenly becomes a lot more attainable, it causes some problems between her and Andy. It's a beautiful book about like high school theater, about like friendships and how friendships change and grow over time. It has romance. I just absolutely fell in love with this book. I read it in like one sitting and was sobbing the entire time. It truly feels like a love letter to anyone who's ever done high school theater. Like honestly, it's so good and so realistic. I feel like a lot of people like to drag theater kids, but we aren't <laughs> all terrible. I don't know. I feel like theater kids have a bad reputation on the internet. Um, <laughs> there's crazy people in every sort of major, so calm down. Overall, I just absolutely love this book. I rated it five stars. It comes out on April 21st, so be sure to read it because wow love it. The last book that I read was Boyfriend Material by Alexis Hall. This is about a guy named Luke who's the son of a former rock star and he has a bit of a bad reputation that he is trying to fix so he ends up fake dating this guy named Oliver who is seen to be like the perfect sort of guy. He's very posh, very like button up. Basically he's perfect to help Luke with his reputation. But of course feelings happen. Real feelings, not fake relationship feelings. Overall, I really enjoyed this book. I really liked Luke's journey. However, I felt like we didn't really get any sort of um, development of any of the other characters, including the love interest Oliver, and I felt like there was a lot of potential there. Their romance was cute, however at the beginning it was like very based on like physical attraction and there wasn't as much like actual chemistry between the two of them and I found that was like a little weird. Overall though it was really good. I did enjoy reading it. I ended up giving it 3.5 stars. There we go. Those are all the books that I read in the month of December. I am very pleased with this reading month even though there were some like doozies in there. Well thank you so much for watching. If you like this video be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like this be sure to hit subscribe down below. I do already have my January TBR video up, so be sure to check that out as well. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, and until next time, bye!